So I have here today is Doman Kozar, and he'll be pre presenting his talk, How to Change Nick the Nix Ecosystem to Become Mainstream. So he's really just going to dive first into why this matters for the community, and then we're going to take a look at current Roblox and possible solutions. And <laughs> I did get this um, information from one of Doman's friends. And just so you all know, it is rather interesting. But if in an alternate reality, Doman was not able to be a programmer, he would probably be a professional gamer. So think of it like a Twitch streamer. So yeah, take it away, Doman. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah I want to mention, first of all, welcome everyone. I'm really grateful that we live in such times that we can do this from our homes. Um, I'm going to switch to the presentation now. Um, and I hope you won't see too much of my CPU fan noise. Um, so yeah, um, I want to talk about what we can do to get mainstream. Um, and just before I start with this talk, um, I just want to say you know, this is merely my opinion based on a lot of, I would say, experience or presence, Along's presence. Um, and it's it's an invitation for collaboration rather than, you know, I think it should be this way and there is no better way and so on. Um, and also an invitation for discussion. Um, so let's dive in for just before I dive in, and you know, just a few things about my history with Nix. I've kind of with way too much text here, but um, I started eight years ago. Uh, I was introduced by Florian Friesdorf to Nix. Um, I organized uh, with a bunch of other people from uh, Slovenia to Sprints. Uh, shortly after that, I had a talk at FOSDEM and PyCon talking about Nix and trying to get more people to pay attention. I was release manager for four releases between 2014 and 2016, um, and then I had my full-time Nix job working for Snap, which was really great. Um, then later, when that finished, uh, I joined IOHK as a DevOps team lead, and two years ago, I announced CacheX, um, binary cache hosting for open source and businesses, and then I joined with, Hercules, with Robert on Hercules CI, and then we I part of that project, so I'm now fully focused on CacheX, and this year I announced uh, funding for CacheX, which allows me to work on this full time until it's able to cover my living costs. Um, so very briefly, um, this is this was the spring in 2013. We were in a small wooden nice house in the middle of nowhere in Slovenia with fiber optics. Uh, we had really great time. You can see Elko at the very left. Um, you can see Rock Arbors on the very right. Um, there's also somewhere there in there me and uh, a couple of other people you might recognize from this picture. Um, so Nix was very small uh, back then, and uh, this was, I think, the first or one of the first really social gatherings. Um, so what I wanted to go. Uh, with this is, you know, why why does this even matter? Um, why should we strive for this? And again, I don't think every, everyone should feel this way or, or think this way. Um, this is something uh, I, I, you know, it's passion to me and probably I hope for others as well. Um, and, you know, we're a big community, uh, a really big open source projects by, you know, world standards. Um, and a lot of us that ended up here is because of passion. Um, but now, yeah, I think there is, if, if we really want to go mainstream, we need to do some things. Um, I wouldn't say differently, but rather additionally. Um, so it took about 17 years uh, to come here. Um, and and prob I don't know how many people, I wish there was a good way to count this. Um, Probably just by looking at all the statistics, uh, you get an impression on GitHub. Um, but I think there is a way that is uh, sustainable um, in a way that we don't per burn people out, in a way that people get fair compensation, and in a way that things get better. Um, so I'll draw this little feedback loop um, where you know we have industry use, 
that hires full-time Nix developers that leads to improved Nix, but also improved Nix leads to more industry use. Um, and this feedback loop can be you know, positive or negative, right? If, if we get a lot of people who have to use Nix or are forced into using Nix and they're not happy with that, um, then this kind of goes the wrong way. Um, and if they are happy, they become you know, so-called fans or people who advocate for Nix and this feedback loop is positive. Um, so, well, the only thing we can really influence here is Nix itself and then industry uh, can do its um, role. And the question is, of course, like, you know, what part of Nix should be um, fixed? Because it's a huge ecosystem at this point. So there needs to be some um, focus on, on what are the things that will really unlock this adoption. Um, and you, most of you are probably software developers, so you know that some things lead to no change, even though you do the hard work and some things lead to a huge change. Um, so the question is, which one is which? Um, so just briefly, I forgot to mention about why this is important. Um, I think it's, it's, you know, when I look back eight years ago where we were then and now, I, I see, you know, this really amazing change of all the tooling that has been built and everything we've done that we never could have done with, you know, those 50 or 100 people back then. Um, so I see this the same way going forward um, and um, we can only do as much in our time that we have. So getting more people into, into the problem, you know, it doesn't solve all the problems, it creates some problems, but it does solve that we get to enjoy better things. Um, all right. So the question is how to get mainstream. And I would like just for a minute to ask you what do you think? And uh, those who are on NixCon channel, uh, you can write there uh, your thoughts. Um, I'm curious if you're on the live stream, I think on the right side you should have IRC. Um, and yeah, I'm curious about your thoughts and I'm going to go there and quickly check. What do you think? Um, and then I'll, I'll go into what I have to say about this. So let's give it a... I don't think I saw any questions just yet, gentlemen. All right. Let's see if, let's see if people... Uh, all right. Keep yeah, if you see them in the, the NixCon website. channel, we shouldn't exactly take those from there. They need to be in the NixCon QA channel. Yeah, I'm just going to read a couple of ideas from people and, and move on. Because, um, you know, just to get some fixes, the installer website has improvements have been great. Uh, documentation is a big deal. Fix the installer, um, predictable command line API. All right, I'm going to switch back to my talk, but I'm going to read those later on. Um, and I'm curious what everyone thinks. So, so I think there's, there's two parts to getting this right. One is to focus on doing one thing well, and the other is to listen to newcomers for feedback. And um, I think these are both kind of recipes in general for a successful project. Um, but this is something, this is the angle at what I'm going to look at here. So do one thing well. I, I, I joke often, that, you know, Nix is JavaScript for DevOps. Uh, it's, it's, it's funny, it hurts at the same time, but it's, I think it, there's some truth in there. Um, but, uh, you know, better way to say it, it's an API for DevOps. Um, and that's a really huge surface to solve. Um, so I think it's it's better to go into more specific bits, like you know, it's a way to set up development environments and so on. Um, so uh, we already have kind of a problem here. What that thing is that we do well, um, but I think those are good angles. Saying okay, we're the API for DevOps, and then we go into different bits: development, build, deployment, and so on. Um, yeah, and for listen to new newcomers for feedback, 
I, I gathered a bunch of tweets here because I think they resonate well with, you know, the feedback in general. Um, of course, I cannot like give. I didn't do any real analysis or you know, I don't know a scientific method. This is pure, uh, you know, just my judgment. But here, there is a bunch of tweets. Um, I'll read a bit, you know, while I'm extremely grateful for the effort that's gone into documentation, I don't feel like it's there yet. I feel a lot of, I feel like a lot, I spend a lot of time refiguring things out. While it's a brilliant system, there are still sharp edges missing the vacation, list of pattern best, best practices. Um, running Nix and Nixos for almost a year, however, documentation is hard, it lacks guidance for beginners, hard to see how pieces relate. We need advocates to simplify this process. Um, I really want to like Nix. I'm just terrified to try again. And when I see how documentation is essentially unchanged, um, steep learning curve, largely due to lacking documentation, poor discoverability. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of other tweets. I was also frustrated when I started Nix, but it has a learning curve and the documentation is not the best. By far, Nix's biggest problem is not the obscure language, it's the lack of reasonable documentation material supporting a reasonable learning curve, and so on. Uh, here is someone saying that the instructions they copy doesn't work because it wants to build a NixOS attribute which relies on NixOS channel, but if you are on Nix packages, um, that won't really work, and so on. So, so here's in the middle, there's how long do you think it would take for engineering without Nix experience to convert a setup similar to the one post using Nix, including learning time. We have 15 Haskell services that have considered moving to Nix, but assume the switching cost would be too hard. Too hard. And the last one, I like Nix a lot, but when I use it, the, I found the documentation sorely lacking. Has the culture progressed past just read the Nix files in the past couple of years? So, it's all about developer experience, um, and, and if you want to have that feedback loop, you know, we kind of have to acknowledge what are the gaps there. Um, and, and the feedback is there, it's consistent. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not that, I want to share some positive light on this. Um, here is a graph of pull requests per month on the Nix repository. I'll be mostly talking about the Nix repository because I think a lot of these things come from, from that. Uh, that's where all the core is. Um, and you can see a sudden rise in the recent months. I think this is due to two reasons. One is we finally have a really good CI, a story on GitHub for Nix repo, which started in summer, end of February, March. And we have uh, the IPFS effort, which led to a lot of contributions. So, um, things are going in the right direction. All right, so documentation that has been, I think, number one, and I think it's by far the most important bit. So again, a few positive things that are happening. In the Nix master, we have a documentation command, which will, for now, print a documentation for all the built-ins and so on. Um, there is the Nix manual in the master repo is now written in Markdown, so contributions should be very easy. Um, however, there is an RFC for this, which is, I think, almost there. So I really hope that gets accepted soon um, so we can move on and enjoy those improvements. And uh, last but not least, there is a lot of work has been done on improved error messages, more on this later. Um, and I think that also will impact a lot on the experience. So what I do think is missing um, for doc documentation is the following. Tutorials. Um, so a lot of this is focused around people getting into Nix and like really making sure this experience is best possible. Right now you have to go kind of through uh, manuals um, to find ways to start. Um, Really, really big feedback that I hear, hear all the time is people have no idea in which manual is what. So we either merge them or we provide a search through them. I prefer for the merged option, um, but either of those will do. Um, and then a way to attach documentation in code and a way to generate documentation from Nix files. Um, and then frequently asked questions. I think that's, you know, 
uh, I like that saying, a common knowledge is what everyone knows except you. And I think this is very true for Nick. So I think getting that written down is really important. And the last bit is that reference and narrative documentation. So documentation that tries to explain things is still a bit mixed and it's hard to reach. Um, so I think this, if there is one thing that's really important from this whole talk, I think it's this slide. This will make the biggest difference to the people coming into Nix. Um, so just to give you one idea of how documentation can also impact uh, experiences, this is documentation I wrote when people use CacheX and they are not getting uh, results from binary cache. You can see it's the, the procedure is quite complex. Now, some of this could be automated, and that is my plan. But I would just like to know that documentation also exposes how some things are more complex than they should be. So in this case, you have to check if the hashes between what you're requesting and what you're expecting in binary cache matches. And you have to check if you've reloaded the daemon or not. Um, you have to check if derivations allow substitutes in the first place, um, and, and so on, and so on. Um, so I could, you know, documentation could be its own talk, but since I only have, uh, you know, a few more minutes, 10 minutes, um, I want to jump onto installation. Um, so I think the, the biggest, Hmm, how to really phrase this, the biggest problem we have right now is that installation has this matrix of multi-user, single-user, sandbox, or no sandbox, and then also different platforms. And that's already a huge matrix of possibilities of things going wrong. Um, so a bit more about this later, but I think this is more complex than it needs to be. Besides that, the installation for daemon and versus no daemon follow different principles. One of them can be reinstalled, the other one cannot be reinstalled. Um, and if you go through the Nix bug tracker, you'll see there's a lot of cases still when things don't work. Um, this has been proven through the last years, but I think it needs way more attention. Um, for example, the Mac OS users with a specific chipset currently cannot even install Nix, and as someone coming to Nix ecosystem and, you know, a company with, let's say, 20 people, that's a huge problem. Um, how can you then expect the whole company to use Nix? Um, this is really huge, I think, for adoption, um, something that I think there were just recently talks how to improve this, so I'm really glad and thank you for working on this. Um, and yes, because of the installer, reinstallation and upgrades are pretty painful, too many options, too complex. Um, and yeah, the last one I already mentioned. Um, so I don't have really a good proposal for this, except it needs attention and work. Um, I think the biggest one, which I'll talk later about, is that the multi-user and versus single-user support provides most of the headaches. Um, and then, as mentioned, command line interface is, the new command line interface is really, really nice. Um, but it's been experimental for I don't know how long. I think it's been two years already. And with Flakes coming in, I think it's going to take even longer. So what I think needs to happen here is just to wrap up the feedback and get it released. Um, it's a lot better than what we have right now. If you go through tutorials that I'll show later, uh, you'll see that some of the really easy things that should be easy are really complex with the current common line and with this one there, as one would expect with a package manager, a simple interface. Um, convention over configuration, I think, is something that Nix needs to adapt. And I'm really glad, grateful to see Flakes um, really um, have this in mind, and I also am glad with the new module system that things are getting a bit more semantic. What I mean by that is an example is you know if you have a default next package, what is the return type of that package? What do you get back? Do you get a single package that this whole project is supposed to install? Do you get an attribute set? What's inside this attribute set? So these are all the questions that Flakes answer, and I think it's really great that. 
the modular shift system will also bring this mindset to the um, and ex being able to expose more things about packages, provide you know searchability, scorability, and so on. Um, I think one area where we don't have a lot of focus right now, but also would be even more impactful is language support unification. This is where there are different ways to package, let's say, uh, Python, JavaScript, and other um, different languages in Inks. And the interface, how that's done, is different for each language. Moreover, there are different approaches how this can be achieved. So I think Nicola had a pretty good talk last year about this. And it would be great to have that written down as a documentation and then these projects classified as such. And with the new module system, or hopefully even before that, uh, having a, uh, an IRFC that would you know, unify this um, so that you know, if I'm working on Node.js or Python or Haskell, I get pretty much the same API and I don't have to le relearn that API over again. I think that's a huge cognitive overhead um, that, you know, adds a lot to the learning curve adoption that people are talking about. Um, the language, I think people can grasp. It's not that, I mean, it is a functional language. Sure, it has things, but the fact that you just switch to a different um, language support um, and you have to, like, reread the docs and figure out everything, that is huge downside currently. And this is probably the most controversial bit of my talk. Um, and something I don't expect to happen, but I think a lot of features could be removed that would also improve adoption. Um, with Flakes, I really hope the Nix channel goes away. There's there's so many bad things about Nix channel that I don't really want to go into. And in my tutorials, I was always avoid it at all costs. Um, and I think that will happen as we adopt Flakes. Imperative package management and multi-user support are the two controversial ones, I would say. Um, I think if we had a really good story with declarative package management, the imperative package management wouldn't be that much needed. Um, that's probably a really long debate, but you know, back to what I said, do one thing well. Um, I think already here we have a split again, and multi-user versus single user, the same story. Um, supporting multi-users installing is great. No other package manager does that, but it makes everything complicated. Um, it makes installation complicated. Um, we have to try really hard to support that. Um, and it makes also support and questions really complicated. Like this, let's say, nix.conf option. Does it apply to the daemon? Does it apply to the... Um, to the client? Does it apply to both? What's the context there? Um, a lot of complexity to support that, you know, we can have multi-user um, story, which I'm sure some people are using that, um, but, you know, the old package manager that go through sudo and so on work as well, I think. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have a really, really good solution for this one, but I, I definitely can see complexity. Um, in Nix because of that. All right, and then I want to mention the three things that I've been working on in the last year. Uh, first of all is Nix.dev. It's an opinionated guide for developers getting started and wanting to get things done in Nix ecosystem. Um, there is a getting started template. There is a bunch of tutorials. I plan to write five to 10 more. Um, I had a bit of a pause now in August and September, but I plan to get back to that. There's a lot of anti-patterns and FAQ so, so far the feedback has been great. Um, with Ben Burdett, where he's doing all the hard work uh, running a campaign to improve uh, Nix errors. Um, you see a bit of a result from that work already in Nix Master. Here's a screenshot of that. You can see the source now, uh, where it's coming from. And right now you can still donate and that time will be spent on specific errors you can also send us a link to the errors you'd like to see fixed from Nix uh, issues. Um, and yeah, this is a long-term project and I hope, I'm really grateful for everyone that donated. I think we gathered uh, about $4,000 so far. Um, and Ben has, Ben is gonna do some work still based on the last donations. So if you wanna see more of that, um, yeah please donate and send us the links. Um, 
And then last but not least, this is the work that allows me to work on X full time currently um, is the infrastructure project cachex.org for binary cache hosting. Um, it has about nine terabytes of monthly traffic right now and growing. Uh, over 2,000 developers uh, have signed up. Uh, it allows uh, public caches. These are mostly meant for open source projects. Uh, keep using them for whatever you do. Um, I'm really grateful every time I see a project using Cachex and delivering, saving that time from developers. Um, and private caches are meant for protecting proprietary code so that you can use it in a company or other setting where that's appropriate. Um, and it comes with a CDN with unlimited bandwidth, so you'll essentially just pay for the storage uh, in different plans. And there is a way to integrate into various continuous integration systems and the docs are at docs.cashix.org. Um, what I plan to work on next is uh, a bit better fine-grained um, way to authorize access just to a specific cache, organization support, and uh, native support for Nix copy. So uh, the HTTP binary cache protocol, which is a lot slower and less efficient than what Cachex currently does, but this has been requested so far a lot of times that I'll be and try to support. Um, so that's uh, very briefly and quickly in 25 minutes. Um, I think the gist of my talk is we have to focus on documentation, installation, and command line. And um, I think things are spreading out now to flakes, to content addressable storage, and a lot of things. And I think it would be really good to to get those things in order first. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So on. <laughs> Thank you. So um, it does seem you did run over the time. And um, let's see, questions, as for the questions, I don't see um, a ton of questions. I do see one Kashyx related question. So maybe I can send that to you and I yeah, also have my own questions it. also. Okay, so the, are there a local, local hosted version of Cat 6 or something like that? Uh, local, so you you cannot host it yourself um, because it's, it is closed source, the server part, but I do offer on-prem um, given that you are willing, of course, to pay extra than the cloud version um, if that's something that you require. Right, right. I actually use Kashyx, so. <laughs> okay, so I actually found myself um, agreeing with almost everything you said throughout this talk. Yeah, from the perspective um, of a um, Nix developer, all of this makes like really good sense. And I always find that these types of talks are um, really interesting to also watch in like the future. Like I think I saw a talk by um, Rock from like a couple years back and it was like really interesting to see where we were now compared to what that um, talk focused on. Yeah, um, but we'll see. I mean, I had a talk in 2018 where I say the focus is on documentation and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, and the infrastructure comes first because we somehow have to get the funding to fix documentation. So two years later, I think that part is checked off. Um, so now on to documentation. Right. I feel like um, you said with documentation, being it actually being able to like be a format that developers would love to touch is going to change a ton of things for sure. So we would love to see that RFC um, actually get accepted. I'm anticipating it. Yeah, I, I think it will. I mean, the feedback has been that way, and um, I don't see any reason why not. I'm exactly. I see someone's question. They're asking, like, how does one actually get started using, like, doing documentation? And currently, I would say that trying to do the current state of things is actually really, really difficult. So, um, yeah, if it were a markdown situation, it would probably be much, much, much easier, and it would get written much quicker. Yeah, I think the answer to that is right now, it's extremely hard to make big changes. This is why also. I've started Nix.dev project as a separate one because I just wanted to get it done and not um, argue or discuss too much about how it should be done. Mm -hmm. um, but I hope with the RFC, we will get in the right direction. My suggestion is start small, contribute small improvements, um, you know, just small steps 
that already is a huge help. Right. Um, I have another question here, and it says, in your opinion, if you had to pick one, what's the single biggest bottleneck for stabilizing new features faster slash going faster as a community? Uh, I'm not sure how you'll exactly answer that one, but you can try. Mm. I, I think the biggest one for adoption would be documentation for people who are getting started. Um, right. And it, that's number one by far. Um, and yeah, then the rest of the two follow. Okay, I do see them. I get type notifications, so I can see someone is actually typing a um, question. Yeah. I don't think we'll have any more questions for the Q&A portion, I believe. So, Gilman, thank you for being here. I really did actually enjoy your talk. Like, as a actual like contributor and a f former and current release manager of like NixOS, all these things are like definitely bright in my mind as well. Thank you. Yep, everyone. Your